Who is Marshall McLuhan? Meet the Canadian media theorist who predicted the Internet. On his 106th birthday, Google is honoring Canadian Professor Marshall McLuhan the man credited with predicting the rise of the Internet. Canadian Professor Marshall McLuhan rose to prominence as a media theorist while teaching at the University of Toronto in the 1960s. He is celebrated as the man who predicted the rise of the Internet, and on his 106th birthday, Google is honoring him with his own doodle. Here's what you need to know about McLuhan and his ideas. Who was he? Born in Edmonton on July 21, 1911, McLuhan's family moved to Winnipeg when he was four. He attended the University of Manitoba and Cambridge before teaching at the University of Toronto, where he remained for the rest of his life. There, he produced a number of notable works including his most famous. The Medium is the message and chaired the university's Center for Culture and Technology, which it created just to keep him on staff as he received multiple offers from other universities. Fun Fact McLuhan was good buddies with another controversial Canadian academic, Pierre Elliott Trudeau. Trudeau once told CBC about a letter he got from McLuhan, where the writer told Trudeau, who had grown a beard while he was opposition leader, that the reason for his facial hair was to cool his image, and that he could hot up again by shaving. He has a perception of these things which makes discussions extraordinarily fertile, Trudeau said. McLuhan described Trudeau as an actor, both emperor and clown. The clown is really the emperor's PR man, who keeps him in touch with the world that the emperor cannot reach. The clown interprets the emperor to his court or the public and indicates their mood. He tests the emperor's mood by teasing him, and in turn interpreting the whims of the crowd to the emperor. I've never heard of a politician who could fill both roles. Trudeau is unique. McLuhan died in 1980 from a stroke he suffered the previous year. Predicting the Internet McLuhan didn't live to see the Internet, but many have argued his concept of the global village predicted its rise. The gist of his global village idea was that, with the rise of electronic media, the information system would become global, putting people in contact with information from everywhere. McLuhan said the emergence of the global village was already shifting behavior as he was writing about it. One of the effects of living with electric information is that we live habitually in a state of information overload. There's always more than you can cope with, he said. I used to talk about the global village. I now speak of it more properly as the global theater. Every kid is now concerned with acting. Doing his thing outside and raising a ruckus in a quest for identity. This idea was met with hostility from many critics and academics. McLean's editor-in-chief at the time Peter Newman said McLuhan was savaged by reviewers, though many high-profile academics supported him. McLuhan waved off the criticism as a nuisance. Years later, the Internet came into being, and many saw McLuhan's work with renewed interest. Appearance in Annie Hall As it turns out, philosophy chops don't necessarily translate to acting chops. McLuhan's fourth wall-breaking appearance in Annie Hall has him dragged out from the edge of the scene by a frustrated Woody Allen to confront an annoying media professor. He delivers the hilariously awkward. You know nothing of my work. You mean my whole fallacy is wrong, which doesn't really make any sense. Russell Horton, the man who plays the professor who gets shut down by McLuhan, told Entertainment Weekly that McLuhan took as many as 18 takes to get it out. Allen didn't seem to mind when the University of Toronto tried to close McLuhan's research center after his stroke, the director protested and the school backed off. The Four Pillars of Human History one of McLuhan's favorite theories was that human history could be divided into four ages. Acoustic, literary, print and electronic. As television became a staple of Western middle-class life, McLuhan argued that people were being reshaped by the transition from print to electronic technology. In his 1964 book, he theorized that in the acoustic age, when humans could only communicate orally, Ears and mouths became the paramount sense organs, and early human society adapted to pick up information that way. As the written word rose to prominence, 
particularly with the invention of the printing press, this shifted. Reading was linear, logical, and done alone, so people became more individualistic, he wrote in Understanding Media. The Extensions of Man The most recent shift to the electronic age, with telegraphs, telephones and television, reshuffled societal organization towards global and more participatory information systems. The world is now like a continually sounding tribal drum where everybody gets the message all of the time. A princess gets married in England and boom, boom, boom go the drums. We all hear about it. An earthquake in North Africa, a Hollywood star gets drunk away go the drums again, he said in a 1960 CBC interview. The medium is the message, or massage. McLuhan argued that electronic media almost literally wires people differently. All media, from the phonetic alphabet to the computer, are extensions of man that cause deep and lasting changes in him and transform his environment. Such an extension is an intensification. An amplification of an organ. Sense or function. And whenever it takes place. The central nervous system appears to institute a self-protective numbing of the affected area insulating and anesthetizing it from conscious awareness of what's happening to it. It's a process rather like that which occurs to the body under shock or stress conditions, he wrote. As a result, precisely at the point where a new media-induced environment becomes all-pervasive and transmogrifies our sensory balance, it also becomes invisible. By shaping how societies obtain information, the medium, television, telegrams, telephones, etc., shaped people as much, if not more, than the message did. When copies of his 1967 book The Medium is the Message, an inventory of effects came with a misprint, reading The Medium is the Massage, McLuhan decided it proved his point and ran with it. His work isn't without criticism. Welsh academic Raymond Williams In his 1974 book Television argued that McLuhan's theory is dangerous. Because if one argues that the medium overshadows the message itself, no matter what the intended message is, then the medium and have free reign to exert control over that very message. As Williams puts it, it gives the gloss of avant-garde theory to the crudest versions of their existing interests and practices.